Good morning, Beach Park kids, and welcome back to another week of Virtual Sunday School. I'm Miss Ashley, and thank you for joining us. I hope you had a great week. I hope you enjoyed your Monday off of Martin Luther King Day, and you got to spend time with your family and do some extra special things that you didn't get to do over the weekend. I am hopeful that you prayed for our prayer request this week. That was our missionaries and our people who travel to spread God's word that you gave them the wisdom and power and knowledge to say the things that they needed to say. So let's review our story from last week. Does anybody remember who we taught about last week? All right, we talked about Stephen. So number one, our question was, what did God help Stephen do? Do you remember what God helped Stephen do? He helped him to do many, many amazing things. Number two, why did some of the people turn against Stephen? Hmm. Any ideas? That's right. They disagreed and tried to argue with Stephen. Number three. Why did the Jewish leaders become angry? The Jewish leaders become angry because Stephen accused them of putting Jesus to death. Number four. What did Stephen see when he looked into heaven? He's, that's right. He saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Number five. What did the men do when Stephen told them what they saw? Right. They became very angry and dragged Stephen out into the city and stoned him. And last but not least, number six. What did Stephen ask Jesus to do right before he died? You are correct. He asked Jesus to forgive the men who stoned him. Great job. If you got all those right, give yourself a high five. Great job. I'm so proud of you. Next week, we're going to review all the lessons that we've had thus far. And see if you can remember all of those and some of the questions from each one of those chapters. So let's get right into our story today. And our lesson today is life can change. We can show God's love and mercy and grace to people in our community. Why should we do that? Because God honoring people show how God acts and why he acts that way. Loving our neighbor allows them to encounter our loving God. And God's love is simply transformational. Remember that word, transformational. Our lesson today is going to be God helps people to do His work in their communities and the world. Our weekly verse is 2 Corinthians 5.17, and that says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. So we're going to read our story today. And this is a little bit a longer story than what we've had. So just sit back and relax and pay attention. Saul was threatening to arrest and even kill followers of Jesus. Saul asked the high priest for permission to arrest the followers of Jesus and put them in prison. As Saul was traveling on the road to Damascus, suddenly a very bright light from heaven flashed all around him. Saul fell to the ground. He heard a voice calling into him, 
Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul didn't understand what was happening. Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. The voice answered, I am Jesus, the one you are hurting. Then Jesus told Saul to get up and go into the city. Jesus told him that he would soon be told what he must do. There were men traveling with Saul. They stood speechless. They heard the sound, but they didn't see anyone. Saul stood up. His eyes were open, but he couldn't see anything. The men led Saul by his hand into the city. For three days, Saul was blind. He did not eat or drink. Meanwhile, in Damascus, the Lord spoke to a disciple named Ananias in a vision. The Lord told Ananias exactly where to go to find Saul. Saul had a vision where Ananias came to him and placed his hands on Saul so he could see again. Ananias had heard about Saul. He knew Saul wanted to arrest and harm Christians. Ananias was not sure he wanted to go, but the Lord told Ananias that he chose Saul to tell the good news about Jesus to the Gentiles, the kings, and the Israelites. Ananias obeyed God. He went to the house and placed his hands on Saul. Ananias told Saul that Jesus had sent him to Saul so that he could see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell over Saul's eyes, and he could see again. Saul was baptized. He became strong after eating some food. Right away, Saul began preaching about Jesus in the synagogues. These are buildings where the Jews met to worship, pray, and to learn about God. Everyone who heard them couldn't believe it. Wasn't this the man who caused trouble for the people who followed Jesus? The people asked. Saul became stronger. He didn't stop preaching that Jesus was the Messiah. After many days, the Jews planned to kill Saul. But he heard of their plans. The Jewish leaders watched the, day, the gate day and night waiting for Saul. But Saul's disciples helped him escape. At night, they lowered Saul in a large basket through the opening on the wall. As we read this, this gives us a little look into a transformation. Saul was a person who didn't care about Jesus. He actually threatened to arrest and kill followers of Jesus. Jesus spoke to him, made him blind, and blessed him with the ability to teach and lead others to Jesus. So our verse again today, our weekly verse, is 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ... He is a new creature, and old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. This verse, Jesus, this verse means when a person trusts Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they become a new creation in Christ. Jesus forgives their sins, and he becomes the Lord of their life. God helps people to do their work, his work in their communities, in their world. Last week, we talked about people who go out into the world to spread God's word. Do you remember what those people are called? Great. They are called missionaries. And we prayed for these people last week. And we need to continue to pray for those people every week. As we continue in to look into our 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, the Bible says, pray, thanking God that Jesus changes people and when they trust him to be their Savior and Lord of their lives. I'm going to ask God to help you, help you friends this week as you do your work for God in the communities and in the school and the world you live in. This week our prayer is going to be to thank God 
that people can trust in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And thank Jesus for changing the way they think and the way they live. As you go this week, continue to pray for the missionaries and your friends, the Sunday school teachers, and the pastors. Also, remember your blessing box. We're going to fill this up for all of January. Any blessings that you counter throughout the week no matter how big or small put that in your blessing box if you haven't made a blessing box i encourage you to do that um, i know several have and they've shared that with me and i greatly enjoy looking at those so very much thank you um i next am going to read a devotional a i am devotional and this goes along with our story that we um, had today um, about um, Saul. This is called Serving Jesus and Serving Others. At a restaurant, a server comes to the table to take your order. The cook in the kitchen gets your food ready and the server brings the meal to your table. The servers and the cooks all have a job to do for you. As Jesus' follower, our job is to serve him. And one way we can do that is by serving others. That's because Jesus serves others and we want to be like him. <clears throat> it's also because when we serve others, as if we're doing it for him. On a future day when Jesus returns to earth, he will say, Whatever did you do for one of my brothers or sisters, no matter how important they seemed, you did for me. So what are ways that we can serve others? Just look around. Jesus talked about making sure everyone has enough food and water. Can you donate to a food bank in your town? Or help your mom and dad take a meal to a family experiencing trouble? Jesus talked about making sure everyone has enough clothing they need. Do you have an extra winter coat that you could give to another child who doesn't have one? Jesus talked about visiting people who feel alone, especially people who are sick. Maybe you could go with friends to a nursing home to talk or play games with these people. We can't do everything, but we can all do something. God gives us gifts to you so we can share with others. Be a good servant for Jesus. Look around and find someone to help today. I encourage you this week to do something small. Take out the garbage for your mom. Help your dad um, pick up the toys. Help your brother with his homework. Help your sister pick up the laundry. Just do a small task. But if you can't do any of those tasks, you can pray. And that is sufficient in God. Our next, let's review our questions for this week that we will go over next week. Number one, what happened to Saul on the road to Damascus? Whose voice did Saul hear? Number three, what did Jesus tell Saul? Number four, how long was Saul unable to see? Number five, who did God ask to go and place his hands on Saul so he could see again? And that's the, his name is very tricky, so let's see if you remember that. Number six, after Saul got his sight back and he was baptized, what did he do next? Those are all very good questions. I hope you remember those. If you want to review the story from this week, it is Acts 9 verse 1 through 25. And we're going to try something a little different, a little thinker for you this week. I gave this to my boys last night and I have their answers. I will share those with you next week and I'll share my answer with you next week as well. So when you hear this, I want you to think about it. If you have time, comment below and tell me what your answer is. This is called Would You Rather Bible Edition. So today's question is, would you rather have heard one of Jesus' sermons or would you have rather witnessed one of his miracles? Wow, that is really something to think about. 
think about this week. Next week, I will share mine with you, and I'll also share with you what my boys said. Have a great week. Remember to pray for one another. Enjoy. Have a great Sunday. Bye. his wet arms. Me too, said Nathaniel, and he shivered in the creaky boat. I'm hungry, said James, as he watched the water in their empty fishing net. Me too, said John, and his stomach grumbled and rumbled. All the fishermen laughed. All except Peter. Keep fishing, he commanded. It's almost morning, and we haven't caught a thing. Peter sighed. I wish Jesus were here, he said to himself. I hope we'll see him again soon. Just then, the fisherman heard a voice far, far away. Friends, said the voice. What's that? asked Thomas. Do you have any fish? It's coming from the shore, said John. The fisherman didn't know what to think. They didn't know what to say. They peered through the fog and saw a man on the land. You have any fish? The man called again. No, said Thomas and Nathaniel, James and John. No, said Peter. No, said all the cold and hungry fishermen in the creaky boat on the quiet lake. And then the man said something quite surprising. Throw your net on the other side of the boat. Thomas looked at Nathaniel. James looked at John. They all looked at Peter. And Peter said, 
Okay, let's try it. The fisherman tugged the heavy net out of the water and into the boat. Not one fish was in the net. Then they heaved the net back into the water on the other side of the boat. There, said Thomas. We, we did what he said, but what difference does it make? We'll never catch any fish tonight. And then it happened. Fish, the net was full of fish, swimming, flipping, and flopping fish. The net bulged and almost broke. The men could not haul it back into the boat. John stared across the water at the man still watching from the shore. It's Jesus, he said. It's Jesus. Jesus is the one who told us where to fish. I want to see him, said Peter. Peter dove into the lake. Flop, kerflop. Jesus told us he would meet us. He remembered as he swam. Left, left arm, right arm. Jesus told us he would live forever. Kick hard, hurry, hurry. Jesus died once, but never again. Peter smiled as he sloshed onto, out of the water onto the sandy shore. There was Jesus cooking fish over a small fire of hot coals. Pop, sizzle, pop. Soon the other fishermen brought the boat to land dropping their net full of fish. Come and have break breakfast with me, Jesus said. Jesus gave them bread and fish to eat. Thank you, God, for our food, he said. Thank you for my fishermen friends. Thank you for letting me live again after I was dead. Now Thomas and Nathaniel were born, sitting by the fire Jesus made. And James and John were full, eating the tasty breakfast Jesus cooked. And Peter, well, Peter sat on the seashore and munched his breakfast and talked with Jesus all morning long. He couldn't have been happier. <laughs>
God's Story, Zacchaeus. So part of God's story is about Zacchaeus, and it begins like this. Once there was a man named Zacchaeus, let's call him Zac, who lived in a town called Jericho. He was short, and he didn't have many friends. In fact, most people hated Zac. That's because he worked as a tax collector. See, back then people paid taxes, just like now. But instead of sending money to the government, there were men in every city whose job was taking tax money from people. Problem is, those men usually lied. Zach, like most, took a lot of extra money from a lot of people. And all those people hated him. Anyway, one day Jesus came to Zach's town, and Zach wanted to see him. But so did everybody else. And remember how Zach was really short? Well, he couldn't see Jesus over everybody else's head. So guess what he did? He actually climbed up into a tree to look out over everybody. Now, imagine a grown man climbing up in a tree in the middle of a crowd. People probably thought he was crazy or weird. But Zach was willing to look weird if it meant getting closer to Jesus. From up in the tree, Zach watched as Jesus walked up. Jesus said, Zacchaeus, hurry down. Today is my day to be a guest in your home. This was kind of like a famous person inviting themselves over, except way better. This invitation would change Zach's life. Zach scrambled down the tree to take Jesus to his house. Maybe he thought Jesus didn't know about all the money he had taken or how everybody hated him. But Jesus did know, and he loved Zach anyways. Other people saw this and they were mad. They said, Jesus has gone into the house of a sinner. They wondered how Jesus could love somebody who had lied and stole their money. The great thing is, Jesus loves all of us, even after we've done things we deserve to get in trouble for, or even after we actually get in trouble. When we see that Jesus loves us anyway, it makes us want to show that kind of love to others. At least that's what happened to Zach. Right away, he wanted to make things right with the people he had hurt. He knew that just saying, I'm sorry, wasn't enough. So he told Jesus, I'm going to give half of what I have to the poor, and anyone I cheated, I will pay back four times the amount of money I took. When Jesus saw that Zach was willing to accept his love and turn around and show it to others, he said, My friend, today God has rescued you. And even though Zach had been a liar and a thief who was hated by everyone, he became a friend of Jesus and a part of God's family that very day. And that's the story of Zacchaeus. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Zach was short. He was a tax collector. He stole money. People hated him. Jesus came to town. Zach couldn't see him. He climbed a tree. Jesus told him to come down. Jesus went to his house. Jesus loved Zach. Others were mad. Zach made things right. He became a part of God's family. And that's a part of God's story.